Evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to Midweek Bible Study at the Soul Factory. I pray all is well with everyone. I pray all is well with everyone and that everyone is uh, in a great place and that you've been having a wonderful week so far. Um, let me pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for today. Lord, I ask right now that your Holy Spirit and all its power, Lord God, will go out through the waves of this transmission, Lord God, and arrest every spirit, every soul, Lord God, that will tune in today, tomorrow, or any other time, and that they would relax. They would let go of the entire day that they've been having, Lord God, the entire moment that they've been having, if it hasn't been a moment with you. Lord God, begin to Take over right now, Lord God, every aspect of my being, Lord, that I can be here, Lord God, fully, Lord God, as a servant, Lord God, to be used by you, to only share what you would have me to share, and that you, Lord God, will get the glory, and that anyone hearing your word tonight and your wisdom tonight will walk away, Lord God, with some power, Lord God, to overcome a lot of this darkness that's on the earth, a lot of the pain a lot of the hurt that they're experiencing, a lot of the, the doubts they're experiencing, the fears they're experiencing. I thank you, Father, for the sacrifice of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For if not for his shed blood, Lord God, where will we be? Help everyone who tunes in tonight, everyone who will listen to this at any time, Lord God, to understand the price that was paid for the level of freedom that is offered, Lord God, that offered to us every day. I thank you so much for the life that I live, Lord. I pray everyone can see their life in such the light that you have shown, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, today. Bless the ministry, Lord God. Bless the workers, Lord God. Bless this transmission. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, 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 again, welcome. Tonight, this is going to be a great night as always. But before I get started, I just want to do something with everyone. I'm going to ask everyone just to relax. Try to get rid of today, whatever your day was. Today, I was able to get off work early, so I've been home. And because I knew I had to serve tonight, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to look forward to do this all the time. It shouldn't just be when I'm going to serve. But today, I just spent all the time just listening to gospel, listening to music, reading, just thanking God and being so grateful for this life that I've been able to live. These 62 years or whatever, look, I'm just thankful. You know, life keep on moving and things be happening and everything and loss happen, gain happen, all that happens. But at the end of the day, God is always there. He's always there. And it's just that I think we get so busy. We get so busy that we don't recognize him. He's right there. And we've been so used to and taught to move on our own ingenuity and use things outside of us to overcome the outside. <laughs> so it's just, it's just been like a struggle, a battle, and it's not working because we're not walking in our true authentic power. And that is to be the imitators of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and walk in the power of the spirit, the fruits of the spirit, not just show the fruits of spirit. Um, you can't show them if you ain't walking in the power. So tonight, there are going to be some tools for you to get. You know, again, I pray that your ears are open, your eyes are open to hear that nothing, you allow nothing to come in and, and steal what the Lord will provide through me and through his word tonight. It's going to be coming and it's going to be there for you. And when it's applied, I'm living proof to tell you that, oh, it's a great place to be. In spite of all that you might have been through or going through, I promise you that God is the great comforter. His Holy Spirit is truly the comforter and there. And I'm first to tell you, without it, I don't know where I would be right now. I really couldn't tell you exactly where I'd be anyway. So Sister Gail did an awesome job of uh, serving Sunday. 
And she reminded us of the, the series we've been doing um, prior to this one, um, The Amazing Race and um, In It to Win It. So I'm not going to go down that road and repeat that, but I uh, definitely would encourage everyone to, if you really, really love the Lord and you really, really want peace, Let's start being active and, and seeking God. And if we really thirst for God, let's seek him out. Like we seek out all the other things in our life to entertain ourselves, to uh, take up our time. So if I'm in a hole, one of the things that I can always turn to and look at, I say, well, Dave, if you feel like this, how much time have you sit with the Lord? And I know you heard it before and I know you hear it a lot, but it's time now. It's been time, but if you've been anywhere on the face of this earth and living, you can see and you hear, when you tune into the frequencies of this world, you can see and hear all that's going on. I thank God for my pastor, Deron Cloud, for 25 years, my 20 plus, five plus years here, that he saw fit to walk and imitate to the best of his ability, Christ on earth, going through what we go through in life. And Pastor Jill has not wavered a bit. <laughs> and so I'm so thankful to be connected to such a power, such a force that God has provided, such a gift, a gift. We must realize the gifts that are in our lives constantly in our lives and we walk past them every day we experience you know times with them every day but do we really know that they gifts so as a brief review i do want to kind of go back to the beginning to we in a series called get on your mark and i want to go just a little bit back to part one because it sets the stage for what i see for myself as getting on your mark getting on your mark Getting on your mark, you think of a race. I know, you know, when we was coming up, get on your mark, get ready, get on your mark, get set, get ready, go. You know, that type of thing. But get on your mark. It, it just sticks it, and it fits everything that we do at the factory. Once I start to share, and once if you're just paying attention, get on your mark. And Pastor Jill said it like this as I review what she was saying. She says, she said something about it being like internal. Getting on your mark is internal. I got something that I woke me up one night. I just woke up and I came in to the office and I just wrote it down. I'll share that later. But it has to do with that being an internal, an internal place of being. So two weeks ago, I think it was, my mentor shared with me. She said, she said, show up to a sacred space as your best self and with your best energy. Tonight, or anytime we go into, when we're getting with God, we must show up and, it's a, and understand it's a sacred place. It's a sacred place. Don't bring the world in there. Don't bring all them worries and all them things because his word tells us not to. He says that, he said, lay your burdens at my feet. So lay your burdens at his feet off the break. Right now, lay your burdens at his feet. Open your hearts and your ears. Be ready to hear a word that will transform you when you make it applicable to yourself. Be honest with yourself tonight. Admit the truths to yourself tonight. Before I even got on, I prayed so hard to God for God to forgive me for all the sins I committed today. His, his, his thought for us, his, his, his love for us, we can never imagine. We think, Sometimes we think that we just go to church and, and, and it's just going to happen. No, there has to be an inside out change. I have to get on my mark. Got to get on my mark. And getting on my mark, it's several get on my mark moments. So when, when she said that to me, she said, show up to a sacred space your, with your best self and your best energy. That matters. So tonight, I'm asking everyone, show up tonight to this sacred space. Let your best energy, your best self be present. 
Let nothing deter you. Shut doors. Sit, get, get in front of your screen, get somewhere. Tell people don't bother you. The same way we would do with anything else. Let's take, let's be, for tonight, let's be purposeful and intentional about sitting with this word of God. She, Jill, Pastor Jill shared, shared um, as we review in the scripture in uh, part one, it was Isaiah 35, one, and it, I don't have a slide for it, but I have it right here and I wanna go over it because in it, it has some points that was so key to me understanding, get on my mark. And I'm gonna ask everyone who's listening and everyone that will listen, and I'm gonna give you a second. Get a get a piece of paper or even three by five card. And tonight I'm gonna say some words. I might I might read a scripture. And I might say, "Hey, write this word down. Write the word down." Why am I asking you that? Words. It says it says God spoke, and it happened. You follow me? So words matter. Words really matter. So when I see certain words and I, and, and and they are instructional. God's word is so instructional. I've been in the past, and I know many people have, they go, we go to church and we get this great feeling and everything. And we forget to get the instruction that came with the reading of the word. And so it's like almost like abracadabra, something's gonna happen. No, Dave, no, there's a changing from the inside that has to happen, that the outside will start to reflect the inside change. And that whole change is should be geared and should resemble Christ Jesus. He walked as an example. And later on, we're gonna, well, it's going to be so good, I promise you. Because I'm going I'm to I'm show you. I'm going to show you where our Lord understood everything. No, from a human perspective. We get so sometimes that we might not believe that that's true. But it is so true. All right. So the scripture was. Isaiah 35, um, and I'm going to start at verse 3. It says, uh, encourage the exhausted and make staggering knees firm. Already right there, there's some instructions. So write down encourage and write down the exhausted. So write this statement down, encourage the exhausted. That's, that's, that, that's for us, family. That's for us when we go out as imitators of Christ. Christ encouraged the exhausted. He encouraged, he made staggering knees firm. You can really just write this scripture down and take the time on sit with it and say, Lord, how do I apply this to my everyday? Because I promise you there's some principles in these scriptures, in these words that we can apply every day that's gonna make our life that much better because we won't, we, we won't be so focused on things that's going on in our life because we are already trying to encourage someone that's exhausted and we are making staggering needs firm. I love that. It says, say to those with an anxious and panic stricken heart, be strong, fear not. Come on now. I know that. I know that feeling. I see it. It says, be strong, fear not. Indeed, your God will come with vengeance for the ungodly. The retribution of God will come, but he will, but he will save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be open and the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. You know, my eyes were, were blind. My ears were stopped up at one point, but somebody encouraged me. Somebody encouraged me when I was exhausted. When my knees were staggering, they made them firm. Come on, Deron Cloud. <laughs> when I had an anxious and panic-stricken heart, and this wasn't just for me. It's a lot of people that's tuning in tonight or will tune into this message that's in our ministry that this was done for them too. See, it's a reason our ministry is, it says, changing lives from the inside out. Come on, that's all we've been talking about. That's all we've been talking about, family. And so sometimes I, I believe people, I tell myself this, that people get tired, man, Dave, you always talking about drain keys, hold out. You, you all, that's all you, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. And the day I leave, uh, I might even tell my wife, they put that on the memorial thing or whatever, folks. <laughs> no, I'm not joking, I'm telling you. 
We have to recognize when God is laying it out for us. And then we, 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 we see it and we, we digest this word and then become the power of the fruit of the spirit. All right, so I like that. That was 35, Isaiah 35. And it's one more that I want to share with you. First of all, let my notes. The reason I told you this, it says, this is my takeaway with this. A command, instructions. And again, like I said, get on your mark, babe. Get on your mark. And then I wrote down, I wrote, to give those that were that to give those that would see and hear new tools to run this race. So this is all about giving you new tools to run the race. These words of wisdom and things that come out, this is just for you to run the race laid out before us. Life, life is truly a race. And it keeps going. It keeps going. I was talking to somebody about something that happened. And I say, man, this happened. But life kept on going. It was like it didn't even happen, you know? I mean, or it didn't take time out for the person that was going through whatever. Life didn't stop and say, okay, you going through right now. Let me stop. No, life kept going. So he told me about this song that was out. I'm not going to play it or nothing. I'm actually going to get this other scripture. He said, um, it's Hebrews 12, 1. So you can turn to it too. Um, he said, yeah, man, this song says, uh, this train going to keep on rolling and something going to keep on moving or something he was saying. And so I heard this song. It was an old song and, and back in the day. So I just say that to say that's how life is. So don't be surprised. Don't be waiting for life to hold up for you because it's not. You're going to go through and life's going to be happening. But guess what? It says hold on to the, to hold on to the teachers. God's word is, is, is everlasting forever. It's been here forever forever and ever <laughs> and it's so true so hebrews 12 1 it says therefore since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness who by faith have testified to the truth of god absolute faithfulness stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and clearly entangles us and let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us. Stopping right there. That's the Amplified Version, Hebrews 12, 1. I would encourage you to study them two scriptures I just told you about because it's telling us, it's giving us instructions again. It's, 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 it's telling us you, we got a great cloud of witnesses who by faith have testified of the truth. That's what I would just say. God's word is, is just so there, it's, it's just been there. And I can testify about the truth of God's word and those who know me, you can testify. I don't have to say anything. Y'all know me. Y'all know me from when? From when I was whatever. And I don't use that as no badge of honor. It's just a truth. It's just a truth that happened. So we get on to this lesson. We about to do it. This is get on your mark part this is get on your mark part three and um i i had put that into the search engine when i was studying and i just put in get on your mark and some came up and said it is it says it, it is a command used to tell runners to get into position for the start of a race so you know on that paper write position just write the word position i don't know why but write write the word position And I wrote this little note. I wrote this little note. I said, I said, do you recognize when you when when you are being told to get on your mark? Do you recognize get on your mark moments in your life? Do you see them as moments? Or do you see them as a one-time thing? Again, understand that get on your mark is an internal calling. It's an internal calling for, for me to get in position, get ready, get on your mark. Tonight we want to look at some. God's word, and we're gonna we're gonna gonna see where God's servants they they understood that from an internal place, understood to get on your mark from an internal place. How do I? How do I? This is why I believe that because they responded. They responded, and it wasn't like somebody physical came and told them to do it. No, it was spiritual. They heard the word because. 
we talk a lot of times about Old Testament things and they didn't have a Bible. They didn't have, they were, they were actually the word we're reading now. So understanding that, um, and then again, just going back to changing lives from the inside out, our leadership, they prayed so much fast, so much over this ministry before it even got started, that the lives that have been changed here, it was no, it's not a fluke. And I don't even want to say was, it's not a fluke. And I understand something to be clear. Everybody that comes through this ministry, and if you listen to this word, and everybody actually that call itself a believer or a Christian, we are called to serve, not to be served. If we see this world in, uh, in the space that is in, my question to anyone and everyone is, what are you doing about it to make it better? That's something to think about. Write that, write that question down for yourself. What are you doing about it to make it better? Well, let me tell you about this brother in the scriptures, John the Baptist. I've been looking at some shows, uh, some biblical shows, and John the Baptist, um, it just stuck out to me. John the Baptist was in the wilderness, you know, and he, the wilderness, I'm talking about in the desert. You know what a desert looked like? We see we see the um, Hollywood versions of desert and everything, but we couldn't probably couldn't even imagine living in the desert, <laughs> living in, in a wasteland. You probably couldn't imagine. But why I want to use John the Baptist right now is because I want y'all to understand something. John the Baptist heard a call. One came and told him, go do this. God told him. The spirit told him, spoke to him and told him to do what he was doing. What was he doing? Baptizing people, making a way. Can I get the first slide, please? This is Isaiah 43. It says, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for, for our God. A voice calling in the wilderness. I just told you that John lived in the wilderness. You could take it down. Lived in the wilderness. And it's a voice calling him out there. As we go on, we're going to read and we're going to see, pull up the sec, pull up slide two. No, not slide two. No, don't pull up slide two. Yep. Slide two, go. I had to look at my notes to make sure. All right, yes. So listen to this. We're going to read this. In those days, John, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah. And this is what it is said. And this is this uh, scripture here is what is said in Isaiah. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, which we read before, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John clothes were made of camel hair, camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan. I want to keep it up. Understand this. People are going to him. I'm, I'm believing some people heard word of mouth, but I'm believing some people got the call like him. We get a call. Those of us, like, you ever been to church and, and they, the doors of the church open or whatever, but you sitting there, I know for me, when I first did it, some said, just go, man, just go. It was a call. Um, being in ministry, um, when I first came to the factory, went in the service, sitting down in the service and everything, seeing things and everything, and some said, join, man, join, be a part of service, man. Be a part of doing so. The call, how many calls have you had, but you pushed them down? The call is coming to all of us, but do we recognize our get on your mark moments? Because everything I just said was a get on your mark moment for me. That's my belief. Verse seven. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said, when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, 
you brood of vipers, exclamation mark. You see that? Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produced, he said, pro, now he said, produce the fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The ax is already at the root of the trees. And every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who is more powerful, who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His, winnow, his winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The chaff was less over from when you're picking the wheat. All right, you can take that down. Why am I, why did I read that? Why do I want you, why did I read that? I want you to understand something, family. We have to realize that we have a call on our life. We, our, Christ died to redeem us. But the redemption wasn't for me, for you, for anyone who considered themselves a believer to be living in this world for material gain. The scripture that was read earlier services about running this race to get a medal or a trophy, everything. What are you running this race to obtain? And what do running this race look like to you? I mean, if I looked at your life, what does that look like? Let me read some of my notes to you. I had wrote down, John, I had wrote down, John, John was in the desert when this word came. I said that part. When this word came, I wrote down, the desert was a wasteland. It was hard. People were trying to kill John. The Sadducees and Pharisees that they're talking about were jealous of John talking about, well, they, 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 they thought he was crazy. They called him crazy. They called him crazy. He was, they, were, they, they put him in jail. They wanted to kill him. And I, I didn't get as far as to how he died, but I believe they did. You could look it up yourself. My takeaway was John, John was focused, willing. He had courage. His lifestyle reflected who God was to him. He didn't just talk, a, he just, just uh, uh, go out there like a crazy man saying something that he didn't believe himself. He lived such a life set apart for God that his life, all he talked about was, God, I make a way. You know, repent right now. So I'm saying to myself, I'm saying to everyone who's listening, we need to get on that repentance. The fruit, what it says, the fruit of repentance. Produce the fruit in keeping with repentance. I got in my note. What does that mean? What does that mean? I have to understand what that means and not just read these words and push past and act like that. They don't apply to me. They apply to everyone on this, that's in this service and that we'll hear it. This is a very feel good, loving message. If you just know, if you just really love the Lord, if you really love the Lord, it is such a good message because if I keep in, if I keep in, if I keep in, if I produce the, produce the fruit in keeping with repentance, oh, you, my life is so much better. I've been doing it. <laughs> my life is so much better. And yours will be too. But a lot of times we can't see it because for real, for real, we, we're, not, we're, we're not serious. We're not intentional until it all come crashing down. I've lived some dark, dark moments and I kept serving. When my mother passed, I was in church. Not to boast about that, I'm just saying, I understood that at this time, Lord, you, you using me and you have her, whatever I needed to do as it pertains to her, I should have done by now. I love my, and, and I was able to hear my mother say, I'm so proud of you, babe. After seeing, like you see them two pictures behind me, one was one way, 
When my mom passed, I was that way. And she was, I'm so proud of you, babe. And for your mother to recognize that and you or to somebody to recognize that who's transitioning was a great thing for me. So what I'm asking you, do you understand what it means? Producing the fruit of repentance. Listen to this. John the Baptist called people to more than words or rituals. He told them to change their behavior. He was talking, when he was talking about that ritual piece, that's the Sadducees, Sadducees and Pharisees and all them. People who know scriptures like us. Oh, did I say that? I meant that too. There's some people that just like to know them, know that word, know, know that word and, and won't change the behavior. I hope, look, this is a great word. And I don't want to put on airs like, you know, I got it up and I don't want no one to think that everybody that teaches this word is doing this word. And so just hold on to that, family. That's a good thing to hold on to. It says, produce fruit in keeping with repentance means that God looks beyond our words and, and beyond our words and religious activities to see our conduct backed up, backed up what we say, back up what we say. And he judges our words by the actions that, that accompany them. And then it just asks the question, it says, do your actions match your words? You know, and so I just got to remember that. This other piece says, just as a fruit tree is expected to bear fruit, God's people should produce a crop of good deeds. And so as we live, well, I mean, what are we doing? You know, that's, 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 that's real big. What are we doing? You know, are we, are we doing um, the things that we know we, we, we should do? That, do, you, do you ever see where you can really help somebody? Do you, do you, do you see that? And do you do it? Or are you every day of your life is just in, you know, about you? There's some families going through stuff right now, lost of loved ones. And I just wanted to share tonight that a lot of our anxious thoughts and anxious ways are coming from, from outside us. And we're allowing them to contaminate the inside of us because we won't hold on to this word. But I'm asking you tonight to hold on to the word. I want you to know that God, that Christ thought we was worth saving. He thought we was worth keeping. He thought we was worth to die for. What does that mean? It get tough. And I know it's tough for a lot of y'all. Because it's tough for me. You know? I watch my pastors. I watch all the leaders on the ministry. It's tough for them too. It's not easy. But we're choosing. We're choosing to worship God. We're choosing to serve. We put our finances into it. We put our time and our talents into it. And I'm asking you, what are you doing? I don't, I don't know if there's a feel-good message for you. I ain't trying to give you a feel-good message, but I am trying to give you a good word. I hope you can hear. I hope the ears are unplugged, unstopped, as the word says. So like, like, like the like, 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 like my, my mentor said in one of the other services, so that we can be unstoppable. Do you believe you're unstoppable? And if not, why? Why you don't believe you're unstoppable? If God is for us, who can be against us? His word tells us that. Do you feel his love every day? Every day we awake. When me and my wife pray, I always thank God for waking me up. And I always thank God. I ask God, allow your Holy Spirit to engulf Tina and myself. Lord God, that we would, 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 would show the power of the fruits of the Spirit in our everyday activity. I tell my kids the same thing. And maybe if I would have told them earlier, they would have they not had to go through some of the things they had to go through. But I tell them. And now I walk. I ain't nobody special. Get lonely a whole lot of times. Because the world ain't down with this. They want it only when it's something, when they need something. They're coming to God with like a cash cow. You know, but God loved us. He thought we was worth saving, keeping, and to die for. And so that looks like something. Gratitude looks like something. So I'm so grateful for you tonight. I pray for you tonight. If you're going through, I'm lifting you up right now. If you got anything going on, I'm lifting you up right now. And I promise you, the word of God won't, 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 won't. He say, I won't leave you nor forsake you. No, that's a real truth. That is a real truth. Amen. So I got something else for you. We about to, we about to get into it. I want y'all to, now I've talked about John the Baptist. We talked about him getting the call. We're talking about the call being 
uh, the call being get on your mark. I don't know if you can see it like that, but that's how I say I see these get on your mark moments. We talked about uh, us changing our lives from inside out. That's a get on your mark moment. Get on your mark. Because by changing them, now you, you're getting yourself ready to be in position to run this race. We talked about getting on your mark being a command for runners to get in position. Come on. This is a good, good, good word, but it is an active word. So it might not seem seems so good to you, but it's active. And I promise you, when you start applying it, you're going to start to feel it. You'll be like, wow, that's good. And you just move. I, I'm telling you, it's like looking at a movie sometime when I just ride and I go to work because I position myself to be active in God's word and that his fruits for, of the spirit be shown through me. Do I, man, sometimes I got to stop right at the Lord forgive me because I'll do something or say something. That's why it's so in, important to make sure we pray for repentance of sins. We all are doing things that we should not be doing, saying things we should not be saying. And God is very, very clear in his word about producing the fruit of repentance. That is very key. That's very key. All right. So now I want to talk about my savior, our savior. The Lord Jesus. I'm going to tell you, Jesus, Jesus has so many get on your mark moments from the get go. He, he was a get on your mark moment. But I don't want to look at, at his get on your mark moment as something that was, uh, well, it was, so I can't look at it like that. This is what I want to share with you. I want you to know that Jesus felt every bit of the anxieties and the pains one would feel going through what he knew beforehand he had to go through. So pull up slide, uh, no, 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 no. Pull up video clip one. Hold on, no, don't pull it up yet, stop. I'm about to show you a video clip. It's the wedding banquet. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's when Jesus' mother came to him and told him wasn't no more wine. All right. Now, you notice in the scripture says, hey, Jesus asked her, you know, why are you telling me this? And some versions say, and what does that have to do with me? And what does it have to do with you? And he says, it's not my time yet. It's not my time to be to reveal yet. You follow me? And we're going to look at the scripture in a minute. I want to show this clip because in this clip, I want you to pay attention. Because what I saw, I'll talk about it after we look at it. Go. First clip. My time has not yet come. Did you see it? This is what I saw. If not now. Now, the if not now part was it, it's not in scripture. I didn't see that. But that moment was captured in if not now when for me, because if I don't have, if I don't understand that I need Christ now, when I'm going to do it. Also, did you see his compassion on his face when she said, excuse me. And she said, please. And I just want you to know that Jesus was always conscious of what was happening. What was happening, what was going to happen. That's most important that I need you to understand. But he was still willing to do what the father asked him. Are we willing to do what, the, what Christ is asking of us? What his spirit is asking of us when we go out and we see these things happening in the earth. 
Also, Jesus had not at this in that scene, he had not performed any miracles publicly yet. This is where it's not my time yet. Pull up the second one. Someone is going to be talking. And I want you to listen to what he's saying. He's not talking to Christ. He's talking to Murray. And he's explaining something to him. But I want you to, to her. I want you to listen to his words to Murray and apply to what you see in Christ as he is coming looking over into this 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 rock container all right play it once you make that first cut into the stone it can't be on that sets in motion a series of choices. What used to be a shapeless block of limestone or granite begins its long journey of transformation. And it will never be the same. baby and here's why christ in that moment when when the, the stone cutter was talking to murray and he told her he said the first cut can't be undone once you cut the stone anybody i worked in a granite company when you get granite it's this big piece once you cut it you can't undo it you, you cut it it's done and then it says that it, it will never be it would it never will be never be the same in that clip and as I was looking and I was just so dialed in, I understood that Christ was feeling every bit of anxiety. He was, he was playing every bit of what he knew he was signing up for in his mind. And we're going to talk more about because this is just where Christ was. Christ wasn't without anxiety or not experiencing what we what we experienced. He wasn't without that. We, we, we have to understand that. But still in all that, he was able to walk and be obedient to the father. What is our problem? What's your problem, Dave? Why you can't do this? And I can only come up with, and I ain't saying it's easy, but I want to be aware of what is it's what the call, count the cost. Christ counted the cost, he was counting the cost, and he continued to still be obedient. See, inside of us all, I just believe if we just trust God and we be intentional about doing what we know to do, that as we, in our human effort, try to move forward, that the supernatural power will come upon us and help us make it through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why do I believe that? Because I've seen it. I've seen it. Shouting and screaming didn't get me from where I was to here. In turn, inside out changing, rebukes, listening, obeying, doing what was asked of me. Not that I'm in any place anybody chooses to wants to be, but I promise you, I offer to you a truth, and that is, Christ thought we was worth saving, keeping. And he thought we was worth dying for. And in his death and the truth of the testimony of our lives, we're always talking about is deliverance. We have to be able to find, walk in that power. Amen. I like that. That is so good to me. And I get so passionate about it, but I don't want to get over passionate to where I'm just rallying on. I just want, I want you to know it's such a great thing to know, y'all. 
that Christ loves us and his love is so real and his word is so real. So go to him. Those of you who are dealing with the loss of loved ones or whatever you're going through, right now sit with it. I know, I know, hey, you know, it hurts and, and it's real bad. I got you. I'm not trying to minimize the pain or anything, but I am going to assure you that the Lord is right there with you, counting every tear and knowing why you cry every tear. I promise you that much. I, um, I had a slide three of John two. Is that it? Yeah, miracle came and say, on the third day, there was a wedding. Okay, this is doing the whole wine thing. So we're not gonna do that. Let's go to the next one. Next slide, slide four. Let's go to slide four. All right, this is in the Garden of Gethsemane. I love this. I love this. Because again, this is this is proven to the point that Jesus is, was fully God, but fully human. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, Olive Press. And he told his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, James and John, he began to be he began to be grieved and greatly distressed. Do you see that? Grieved and greatly distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved so that I am almost dying of sorrow. Stay here and stay awake and keep watch with me. Jesus is asking them to, to stay awake, to keep watch with him. And I'm just saying this, I know there's no fear that God don't give us no fear and everything, but Jesus was concerned. He was able to experience everything that was going on because he, he's the alpha, the omega. He, he, he sees what's about to happen. And I can't imagine uh, knowing that and still continue to go on. He thought I was the die for. And, after, and 39, and after going a little farther, he fell face down and prayed, saying, my father, if it is possible, that is consistent with your will, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, so you men could not stay awake and keep watch with me for one hour? Keep actively watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. Come on now, get on your mark. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Get on your mark, Peter, John, James. Come on now. Next slide. He went away a second time and prayed, said, oh, hold on, leave it, keep it up. Pastor Jill asked this one time. She said, why would Jesus go three times and, and pray three times, go back and go back? Why, why do you think that? Well, my as I thought about it and I was reading and I was trying to figure out why, me, Jesus was feeling all that anger. He, he had to, hey, look, they about to whip me. They about to crucify me. <laughs> Are you sure? This is what I'm called to do. I'm telling you, it might seem simple to y'all, but we don't, we, we can't, that's why his ways and our ways, his thoughts and our ways, we got to stop thinking we know God like that, that we so know Christ like that, that we so know his life like that and read his word and try to sit with his word and understand back in them times how that was and what, what, what that cause was. He has empowered us. He has empowered, he said, it's a scripture that talks about when Christ was leaving, he was telling the disciples, and they were talking about all the things that they had done with him, why he was here and everything. He said, I'm, I'm leaving, but then he told him, he said, and greater things than these you will do. Do you know the things we are supposed to, to be able to do? That is just something that I think about, I'm telling you. So again, he went away. So let's go to 43. Again, he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words once more. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Listen, 
the hour of my sacrifice is at hand and the son of man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners whose way and nature is to oppose God. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is near. Take it down, come on now. That for me speaks tons of words, tons of stuff, tons. Jesus was feeling so much anguish. And then, you know, I know y'all know the scripture where it says he prayed so hard. It was like drops of blood. I think about that. And so my takeaway from that one is get on your mark and internal awareness and readiness. Get on your mark happens from the inside out. I woke up and I was asleep. I woke up. Someone said, go right. Get on your mark and internal awareness and readiness. It is an internal awareness and readiness. The readiness is what we see in Christ. Christ knew all these things, but he was ready to do God's will. Are we ready? Are we truly ready to do Christ's will, to imitate Christ? Do we just ask Christ for these reliefs in life so that we can just move on to the next thing, but not serve him? I'm not saying that you're not serving. But in a world of all this darkness, there's more darkness out there than I see serving going on. It is so overwhelming. I am tired, but I won't stop serving. I won't. I won't stop serving in the midst of any deaths or anything. I'm not going to stop serving because one of the things I want to say about this, the loss of a loved one for me, I'm going to make sure that I love each and every one of you here right now so that the day the Lord calls you home because I do believe you're going to call us all home absent from the body present with the Lord where we go from that place I don't know it's an unknown space for me I would have done everything I'm not going to fall by no caskets or fall all out screaming and hollering because no guilt that's on me I think that's what it be happening I've seen it I don't have it in my family so that's another story so what am I asking you to do Fine your mark get on your mark get ready to do what god is telling you to do you are aware of what it what needs to be done be willing to do it where's your faith we talk about faith we should be doing things we should be able to heal we should be able to do a lot of things but our faith is, has not and we only need the faith the size of a mustard seed a lot of times i can be, i know christ is looking at me i'll be thinking about things and I'll just, in my mind, I know it could be done. I'll be like, I know this. And so I go out and I'm with all these kids and it just manifests itself. I'm like, look at you, God. Look at you. But he, he want to know that I'm trusting him. He want to know that you trust him. Come on, y'all. I hope y'all getting that. I got one more slide for y'all. Um, go ahead. Put up the songs. We're going to read this. Slide with the last one, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. All right. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him from all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him with all inspired reverence, who fear him with all inspired reverence and worship him with obedience. And he rescues each of them. Oh, taste and see the Lord. Our good, our God is good. How blessed, fortunate, prosperous favored by God, is the man who takes refuge in him. Keep that up. I must take refuge, refuge in the Lord. I must, and I'm asking you to do the same. In the midst of all your troubles right now, I want you to hear that scripture and know that it's true. For the different family, the Kenny family, and even my family, you know, as we deal with loss of a loved one, you know, for me, I understand that, you know, that beautiful spirit, I enjoyed it when it was here. And so I, I'll always know it and I know it to be there with me. And uh, whenever we're around my wife and I, we, 
you know, we we know that that spirit is going to be with us and then she's going to all be around. My kid is going to know, you know, and for y'all that don't know, um, you know, my my wife, my wife and I, we lost a great friend, you know, and my kids, my kids, mother, you know, my my biological kids, mother, we uh, lost her. She caught her. She transitioned uh, earlier this week. I'm not saying that for any calls, no texts. I don't need anything. I'm saying that because I want y'all to understand that, you know, scripture is real. But like I told you, when my mother passed, I was in ministry. One of the things I did all week, I went to work. I made sure my daughter was fine. And I prepared them for things like this. So I'm preparing you. I'm telling you, through this word, God is preparing you. Get on your mark. Stop looking at this world and the material things in it. Stop uh, running this race to get a material uh, uh, a reward. The internal, the internal reward that you will get from obedience to God far outweighs anything that you can obtain. I promise you, you're not going to want for anything. You're not. You're not. But we must trust and love God, and we must recognize that he thought we was worth saving, he thought we was worth keeping, and he thought we was worth dying for. So he constantly put before us, get on your mark moments. What will you do with yours? Will you be positioned for service? What will you do with it? Spend more time with God, y'all. And you'll find that all your questions will start to be answered and all your uncertainties will start to be come clear. And all the hugs you need, you'll be getting them and you'll be smiling and just looking at people. They'll be like, well, why are you always smiling? Because I know the Lord. Amen. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for your word tonight, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that many will be blessed by it, Lord God, because, Lord God, it blessed my spirit so much. Father, I pray I was so far out the way that they heard you, Lord. I pray I was so far out the way that they heard you. And that they will come to you. That they will hear your call in the wilderness, Lord God. And they will come to you, Lord God. I pray for my pastors, Lord God. I pray for the strength of the ministry, Lord God. I lift the Kenny family up to you. I lift my children up to you. I lift my daughters up to you, Lord God. That they will overcome any pain, Lord God. And they will remember the love and the joy and all the fun they had with their mother, Lord God. Father, I cry out to you right now, Lord. Keep the families together, Lord God. Lord God, I cry out to you right now, Lord God. I ask you for your power, Lord God. To be manifested, Lord God, in my behavior, Lord God. Lord God, that I will not, Lord God, shame your word, Lord God but that I will be available for your power and your light to shine through. That I will be so far out the way, Lord God, that your power, Lord God, will heal this land that I'm in, Lord God, in the space that I'm in. I ask you right now, touch Jill, Lord God. Right where she at, God. Give her strength, Lord God, to continue. Touch everybody, Lord God, that's connected. Every minister that will talk across these, these waves right here. Everyone that got their hands on this plow called the soul factory, God. Lord God, you're not done with us yet, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord God, let us now do that, do that work from the inside out. Let us get on our mark, Lord God. As the year get ready to change, Lord God, we thank you, God, for another opportunity. If you should wake us up in the morning, Lord God, we thank you for another opportunity, God. Get on our mark. Hallelujah, God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you so much, Lord. It is our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever and ever now. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.